talk to you about the rate of change in slope today. And the, you know, one particular outcome that I'm looking for is the ability f to examine change, to see how fast something is increasing or decreasing and be able to put a, an actual numerical value to it to measure change. Okay, That is what the rate of change is all about, to be able to measure that. Uh, the slope is the same way. It's just another way to describe the change, but this time it applies to a linear uh, function, which is a straight line. Um, so let's tar start taking a, taking a look at one real life example to see what the change is all about. Uh, pretend that you are selling candies at your school to uh, for fundraisers, and you're 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 monitoring your progress. So on the first day, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put it in a table form. So this is day. And this is the number of candies that you uh, have sold so far. So the first day you sold 30 pieces of candies. So the second day you managed to sell 50 pieces. And on your third day, you were able to sell 70 pieces of candies. You want to monitor this change. Remember, yes, uh, you see that it is increasing. There is a change. But you want to be able to put a value to it and say, well, what is the rate of change? How fast is it that I'm selling my candies? And the way that we do it is to pick any uh, two data points that you have here from your table. Notice I said any two data points. I can pick anything I want. So let's just put this back into a data point format. So this is one day, first day 30 pieces, this is second day 50 pieces, and third day 70 pieces. So I have three data points here. If I have more, I only need to pick any two from your table here. So let's say I'm picking the first day and the third day to measure the change overall. This is like an average change for all three days. And so the way that I do it is to set this up vertically. I'm going to show you how this is done. Remember this, we're comparing uh, the time and the candies sold. So how fast am I selling uh, in terms of, of time? So let's take a look. I'm going to set this up vertically like this. First day, 30 pieces of candy. I'm using the third data point. So third day, 70 pieces of candy. I'm setting up vertically. And once I have that, I just split to make sure I split into two columns right here, you know, separating the input and the output. And I just basically subtract. And you just subtract it vertically, just like you do in a regular subtraction problem. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 30 minus 70 is negative 40, okay? So I want you to understand here, this is your output, right? Or your y value, and this is your input. This is your x value, okay? And and to measure change, we're, we're trying to measure how many candies you can sell per day. That, that's the rate of change, right? So in this case, it's going to be candies over day. So you just basically taking your candies, which is negative 40, over your time, which is negative 2 here. 40 divided by 2 will give you 20 candies per day. Okay, so I'm just going to write out here 20 candies per day as your result. And you kind of see this from here already. Every day that you sell candies, notice that the difference is 2. Okay, and it's this is a positive difference because you are increasing, not decreasing. That's why you see this rate of change being positive. If you were to graph these points, you will also see a positive change. I want to talk about that in, in our next example here. But let me reemphasize the fact that, remember I told you that you can actually pick any two points and you are guaranteed to get the same result, okay? So try that if you don't believe me. But let's move on to uh, the next example regarding slope. So remember I told you about the rate of change. It's just a way for us to be able to measure how fast something is falling or increasing for that matter. And the slope is the same way. It allows us, it's, it gives us a tool to see if our lines is increasing dramatically or is it, you know, falling fast. And uh, be able to put a value next to it and say, oh yeah, this is why it's falling. So let's just, let's just go back and, and uh, kind of look at this scenario right here. Imagine I have this hill, okay, 
and then there it is. And of course, this part here is a cliff. I just want to mention that so you know you don't want to fall on this end. But if you are to walk up the hill, notice that because you are walking up, this what we call is where you're experiencing an, a positive change because you're moving upward. Remember, we always associate it up as being positive. This is called positive change. Uh, of course, you also need to put an extra effort to walk up the hill. So every time that you see your data going up, that's what we call a positive change, or we have this call as a positive slope. Okay, and then as you stand up on the hill, which is a flat surface on the hill, this is what we call zero slope, no change. So no change means zero slope. And I want you to understand, uh, or it's just a quick way for you to remember, remember how you write zero, you always start out with a flat line. That will remind you that yes, a zero slope means a flat line, okay, horizontal. So zero slope means no change. Zero slope, okay. And then as you walk down the hill, what you're experiencing is a decrease, right? When you're going down, it's decrease. Decrease mean negative change. Negative change mean negative slope. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind here. Positive slope, negative slope. So these are very easy to recognize. Now, the important part here is when you reach this point where you are about to fall down vertically, the way that uh, I can help you remember is when you're, think about this, when you're at this dead end and you're falling off the cliff, uh, it's, it's pretty dramatic here, but notice that uh, I don't think you can survive after that. So, so if you can't even survive, I don't think you have the ability to determine any slope whatsoever. So whenever you have what we call a vertical line like this, we call that a no slope. Okay, no slope means undefined. So this is what we call undefined slope. Or you can call it no slope. And notice how you write the word no. You always start with a vertical line first. So that's just to help you remember that, yes, no slope mean vertical line. And zero slope mean horizontal line. Okay? It's just a quick way. So with four particular slopes that I need you to remember, positive change, which is, you know, you see your data point moving upwards. Zero change means it's all flat. No change. And uh, negative slope means your point's going down. There's this trend of going down. Um, and there's, of course, undefined slope where you are falling straight down, which is vertical line. Okay, so four particular slopes. So let's just put, uh, let's give you a tool to, to describe the change here, to be able to describe the change as a numerical value. And the way to describe that is through slope. Now, slope has its own variable. It's also known as m. So every time you, see, you know, in your equation you see the letter m, it also means the slope. And the basic thing that I want you to understand here is that we are measuring a change uh, you know in both vertical and horizontal uh, direction so therefore when we talk about change there the difference difference means subtractions right we talked about difference before and so the basic formula for that is y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2 or you can also write it as y2 minus x1 I'm sorry minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You might ask where are these all coming from? Well recall our first example where I have to pick any two points. There you go. I mean any two points you have you can actually use them to put into this fun and you know, you know formula right here to solve for the, the, the slope and uh, this is how your two points would look like. So imagine you have two points. Your first one, let's call this your first point and let's call this your second point. Your first point will be x1 y1. Your second point would be x2, y2. So any two points you want, you can extract those values and substitute it straight into your formula to solve for it. However, you know, I, I prefer the vertical method, you know, which I show you in a previous example. Let's do that example right now and, and show you how it's done. So let's pretend I give you two points. Okay, 
I mean, I mean, if you can't kind of visualize this um, as a line, good for you. If you can't, I would suggest you kind of plot these yourself. So negative two over to the left and then five up as my first point. So here's my first point and I go three to the right. For those of you who have a hard time graphing, remember this, this is X meaning left to right movement and uh, the Y is your up and down movement. So you always go X first before you go Y. So that means you go in three over and then two up. <clears throat> you have two points, let me just quickly connect these right here. And right away, you kind of see that your line is uh, decreasing. Your data as you go left to right, it is decreasing. Decreasing means what here? Based on this, decreasing means it is a negative change. Negative change means a negative slope. So you expect to have a negative slope. So if you solve it and get uh, something that's not negative, well, check your uh, solution again, just to make sure. But let me just show you how this is done. <clears throat> you can, like I said, start labeling. You can call this x1, y1, x2, y2, and use the formula that I asked you to uh, use to solve this. So it will be y, the change in y over change in x, right? So I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to go 5, here's the slope, 5, minus 2, that's a change in y, over change in x. So that will be uh, negative 2 minus 3. Notice I said if I if you go with x, y2, y1 minus y2, then you need to also go with x1 minus x2. Okay, you can't mix and match. So now it's going to be 3 over negative 5, which becomes negative 3 fifth and it is a negative slope. So we just put a numerical value for this change that we're seeing. It. Yes, <clears throat> it is changing negatively. Okay. Another way that I really prefer you do is, is the vertical method of solving for the slope. I don't know if you like it this way or this way, but the way that I show it is this. You can write whatever point you want. Let's say I pick that point. So I write 3, comma 2. Subtract the point, point you're subtracting. And I put this point underneath it, negative 2, Five. Okay, there it is. I separate two column. This is the y column. This is the x column. As if I'm doing a table. Okay, so I just start subtracting. Three minus negative two. Three minus negative two is, uh, you know, it's changing positive. It's going to be a five. Two minus five. That's a negative three. And since the slope, once again, the slope is the change in y over the change in x. Don't forget, it's the change in the vertical over the change in horizontal, which is rise over run. You need to be sure you place the right value in the right location. So it's going to be y over x. So it's going to be negative 3 over 5. And guess what? We have the same answer as above. So I don't care how you want to do it. It will provide you with the same exact answers. Okay? But, you know, like I said, I, I want you to have the ability to, to determine, well, is this going to be a very dramatic change, positive, negative change? Just go through a, a quick... Um, visual demonstration here and kind of describe what's going on. So let's say if I have this graph and a line looks like this. Notice it's dramatically increasing. So you would definitely see a very big positive slope. Does it make sense? And versus if you have your line going like this, where it's all flat out, you expect to see zero change. Remember I said zero? So that means zero slope. Okay. And if I have for say a line going like this, drop straight down vertical line. This is what we call um, undefined slope or no slope. Okay, just just a, at least when you see it, you'll be able to say, well, this is what I expect to get back. And then when I give you an actual um, function, you will be able to find any slope for that. So let's give you one last example here, just to demonstrate. So pretend I have this. Uh, graph given to you that looks something like this. Okay. Let's say that I give you a point right here and a point right here. Two points. Technically, I don't give you any points. You can certainly pick any two points you want on the line and use those two points to find the rate of change, or we call specifically the slope, right? So let's pretend this point is 3, 1, and this is negative 2, uh, 3, okay? You can use whatever method you want, but like I said, I always prefer the vertical method so I can 
just start writing. Here's negative 2, here's 3, minus 3, 1. See how I set up vertically? Here's the y, here's the x. So negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, 3 minus 1 is 2, and so the slope is y rise over run, right? Rise is y and run is x, so I put 2 over negative 5, and that is my slope, okay, as you can see there. Um, don't forget, the slope, remember this negative, you can also write it as negative 2 over 5. It is the same thing how you want to do it. Um, so let's kind of keep that in mind here. Uh, try to practice these problems, and I do want you to uh, start working on these five problems before you head to class tomorrow, because I will be checking on these to make sure you understand it. So let's turn to page 192 in your textbook and work on number 15, 16, 28, 32, and 43. So these five problems need to be done when you come back tomorrow.